you are definitely still at the right place with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso. We're here on S3, opening up to some inspiring content when it comes to working in teams and warming and heating up that environment. Because connecting with your team in a hybrid working arrangement has its challenges, a whole range and set of challenges. And this morning we chat to Nikki Bush, human potential expert, speaker and author about the morning huddle, the team cuddle and fixing the model. I love it all. I really do because there's something about that that creates some sort of culture and, 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 and connection and bond with teams, right? Absolutely to be so. And I think it's that bonding, that connection that has had to become more intentional mm. than it used to be. When you had that walk around management, yeah. when the manager, the leader could walk around and see, touch and feel, you know, <sighs> tap you on the shoulder, yeah. how are you doing, yeah. water cooler conversations, yes. those sorts of things, open door in the morning, you know, I'm in the office from, um, you know, 7.30 till 8 before I start work, once I've done my drop off for my child, and anybody can just drop into my office and come and have a casual chat. Yes. Those sort of things disappeared during yeah. the pandemic. Now we're in a hybrid situation. What are you going to do? That's exactly it. What are you going to do? What do we have to do? Because certain things are better done in the office than virtually or not. Well, there are certain things that leaders and managers find easier in the office. Oh. Things like brainstorming. Okay. Innovative think tanks. Um, those sorts of things are generally easier when it's face to face. Mm -hmm. Unless you have some of the um, very, the, the, there's some really good online apps and tools that you can use, but generally large organizations have firewalls that stop you from using some of these tools. So yeah. leaders find it much easier to get their people into a room for that sort of thing. But there's uh, got to be a reason yeah. to get people to drive to the office today because of the cost of petrol. And people have got used to being at home, being able to fetch and carry their children yeah. uh, to and from school, not to have to ask permission. Yeah. So now you better have a really good reason to get me into the office. Thank you very much. And that's my next question, honestly, is, and I have a lot of friends, like all of my friends work in corporate, and the number of times I'm hearing them complain at the end of the day, I don't know why I had to be dragged into that meeting. They could have just sent a WhatsApp voice note for that meeting. Nobody needed to sit together for that. It's a waste of everybody's time. Why, Nikki, are people being called here, there, everywhere, into meetings? Firstly, presenteeism. Okay. If I see you here, I know you're here. You're on the job. Okay. But I'm online on the virtual thing. You can see the green circle. I'm live. I'm there. Yep. So, <laughs> so presenteeism is the one thing. And the other thing mm. is micromanagement and over control. Mm. If I can make you come into the office, I'm in control as the team leader. Yeah. And so there is that sense of if I say be here and you arrive, I've done my job. But you actually haven't because then you're just using positional power. Mm. You're not using influence and leadership. It almost sounds as if, if there was a sound effect and a theatrical expression of that, it would be... <laughs> Ready. I love it. Right? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so there is something good about still being able to, I suppose, reminisce or connect in the way that we traditionally used to pre-COVID and pre this entire virtual uh, 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 experience that we're all going through now. I'm sure that leaders and organizations have an opportunity to really find uh, uh, the, uh, the ability to create inspiring moments through those meetings when they do have them, right? Leave people charged up. Of course, absolutely. So if you're going to call a meeting, uh, make sure it's for a good reason. The first one is that morning huddle. Mm. And the morning huddle is that open door. Okay. And you need to be able to do that whether you're in the office or not, whether your team is in the office or not. So my door, whether I am sitting in the office yeah. or whether I am at home is open for half an hour yeah. from 7.30 to 8. Please drop in either virtually or if I'm in my office or you know at my hot desk. Yes. Come and sit and let's huddle. Yeah. And that's an, an opportunity to shoot the breeze. That doesn't have an agenda. It's just that. And you know, to be so, there is room for moments with no agenda. Now, I know if you want to run an effective meeting, you mm. need an agenda. I use agendas for my yeah. meeting. List queen. The list queen, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But then if you can have a moment, and the morning huddle is, for me, that moment where we can shoot the breeze about 
the weather, the political situation. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I was talking to XYZ in that department, that division of the yeah. company. Do you know what I heard? Mm. Because we've learned to live, in, live and work in silos during the pandemic. And we need to start cross-pollinating what we know, what we hear, yeah. to feed that back into our department or division. Mm. Because this is intel. It's important love stuff. That. You've got to know what's going on out there. I love that. Yeah. Yes, that, that you get intel, but it's connecting as well. I find that people do miss out on the opportunity to connect in that way. Uh, well, listen, Nikki, this is really fantastic, and I always love connecting with you on this. In fact, you must weigh in. Please let us know what your thoughts and your experiences are that you've found on our social media. It's Express the Morning Show, SABC3, at Express the Show on Instagram and on Twitter. In fact, we're going to be chatting some more with Nikki about this, so please do make sure that you stick around. We'll see you in a bit. It's my feel-good breakfast show. We're continuing our conversation with human potential expert and author Nikki Bush about the challenges of the hybrid work setup and what things work best in the office because certain things do and certain things do you need for us to connect in some way. Uh, how can team leaders add some creative flair to meetings is maybe one of the things to uh, start talking about Nikki. Thank you so much for hanging out with us still. How can that happen? How can uh, team leaders make sure that they really inspire and charge us up in the that way to be so the operative word is connection mm. human connection people want to connect they want to be part of a team yeah. but how do we facilitate that as a leader mm -hmm. so before the break we talked about the morning huddle mm -hmm. so having the open door so people can come in over that half hour and just shoot the breeze with no particular agenda yeah. then when it comes to team meetings what I find is that if we try and do too much in a team meeting, especially when you don't necessarily have everybody in the office, you might have some people virtual, some people in the office. Yeah. You know, if you try and do the business end and the social piece in one meeting, I find that if you've got, say, eight or ten people in the group, and in order to warm everyone up, you do the personal thing, well, that's half an hour gone before we even get to the business end. Yeah. So I tend to say split the two. Okay. And why don't we have a team cuddle, which is the social end of the meeting, separately once a week, or maybe it's even once a month, depending on the kind of team and the size of team that you have. All right. And it's quite nice to do this, like instead of Friday drinks, which you might have had in the office. Yes. Now you can't necessarily all be there, but we're learning more about each other. Mm. Who's in my team? How many children do you have to be so? Mm. Are you married? I mean, I've just discovered somebody in my team has grandchildren, mm. you know, for example. It's those interesting and things like that. Gives people dimensions, yeah. you know, layers and levels. Yeah. And maybe it's things like, where were you born? Mm. I mean, people mm. have interesting stories. Yes. So, you know, let's make sure we discover yeah. those stories. Um, pet peeves. Yeah. Biggest fears. That gives you some insight into people. How's this one? What was the most fun thing you did this weekend? Yeah. And everybody does weekends differently. And, and people also do like to talk. People do like to share interesting things that they've got up to. If they spent time with their children and had a party, had a jumping castle, they want to go on about that. Oh, completely. And, and when it comes to cameras, I find, you know, working hybrid can be quite interesting. When should cameras be on? Good question. <laughs> Very good question. Yeah. And um, you know, different people, different organizations have a different approach. Mm. My feeling is if it's a process meeting, it's about the doing stuff, mm. um, you can switch your cameras off. You know, unlike you and me who sit in front of cameras for a living, most people don't like to be in front of a camera. Yeah. But if we were having that team cuddle yeah. where we're sharing about personal stuff, if we have a new person who's joined our team, for goodness sake, please, cameras on, everybody. Yeah. Cameras on. You know, those people who have joined during the pandemic who've never met people, mm. do you know how isolated they feel? I have even seen people cry when I run team connection sessions because they finally meet the CEO or the chief financial officer who they thought was scary and they oh, realize they're just man. human.
How do we make sure we get buy-in from everyone on these, you know, new and interesting ways of operating? Because, you know, some people just go, oh, yes, I don't have to see anyone ever again. I'm <laughs> happy with that. And some people just go, I miss seeing people. I would like to hear what Nikki got up to this past weekend. Is it a collaborative effort? And do you do trial and error and see how it goes? And your experience in the chats that you've had with the many leaders and organizations. You know, sometimes we have to do something that creates a sense of community and connection and commonality. Yeah. And it could be as intentional as saying, wherever you are, whether you're in the office or at home, this Friday, wear red. Okay. Okay. I've been in meetings where we've been asked to wear a hat. And everybody has to explain why they chose that hat. Right. So there's a story behind everything. Nice. I'll tell you a funny story about that one. Um, the day we had to wear a hat, uh, my son happened to open the parrot cage and the parrot flew and landed on my head in the middle of the meeting. So not only did I have a hat on my head, but I had a parrot on my head as well. But that added character to your hat. And what a story to be able to tell for everyone that was on that phone call. Come of on. Of course I screeched. Uh, which I was on you Zoom. would have to have done. And everybody just canned themselves. <laughs> and nobody has ever forgotten that meeting. And they say, Nikki, don't forget to bring the parrot. OK. <laughs> yeah. But isn't that great? You know, I we've created it. a memory that we can revisit often. And that's what we want to yes. do with our colleagues. Create that. Create memories and oh. a sense of togetherness and belonging, you know, mm. that's important stuff. I love that, that's yeah. culture. And because we're not just machines. Thank you so, so much, uh, Nikki. We are not just machines. We, we are meant to connect. We love to work with organizations that we work for, not because they pay us money, but because we get to learn and grow in that process and become better people, hopefully. And part of a team. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that people actually love being part of a team. They yeah. want to be contributing to something bigger yes. than themselves. I love that, and that's the perfect place to leave it. That was Nikki Bush, the human potential expert and parenting expert too. Nikki Bush sharing some tips on how to get that work-life dynamic in balance. Uh, check it out. Of course, her resources are available on NikkiBush.com. And as always, it's all about just moving forward as a society and just doing better and reaching for our full potential. Thanks, Nikki.